I am Dr. Mustafa Fuad and we are going to discuss with each other one of the most common malpresentations which is breach presentation. By the end of this course, the student will be able to Define breach presentation List the causes of breach presentation Recognize the types and positions of breach presentation Describe the mechanism of labor of breach presentation State the complications that may be associated with breach presentation. Understand how to diagnose breach presentation. State the different ways of managing breach presentation. List the importance of U slash S in breach. Recognize the role of cesarean section in the management of breach. State the different maneuvers in the delivery of the after coming head and its arrest. Assist in the management of breach cases. Breach presentation means that the first part to be engaged in the pelvis and consequently the first part to be delivered out of the body is the lower extremity of the fetus. Any factor that is going to interfere with the accommodation theory will cause breach presentation and this will be discussed in details in the face-to-face -face session. We have three main types of breach presentation as shown in the slide and this depends on which part of the lower extremity is presenting. This will be discussed in detail in the face-to-face -face presentation. There are eight possible positions depending on the relation of the sacrum of the fetus and the mother. The station of the breach presenting part is the location of the fetal sacrum with regard to the maternal ischial spines. What is the accommodation theory and why breach is common in preterm deliveries? This will be discussed in the face-to-face -face session. Fetal conditions affecting fetal size, fetal activity, and or ease of fetal movement in utero is going to cause breach presentation. Uterine conditions affecting space available for fetal movement is going to cause breach presentation as in uterine anomalies as bicornuate or septate uterus or in cases of pelvic tumors. This slide shows the incidence of breach presentation in different gestational ages. It decreases as gestational age advances. Diagnosis depends clinical examination and ultrasound while X-ray studies are almost obsolete. Leopold maneuvers will be discussed in details in the face-to-face -face session and in the skill lab. Ultrasound examination is essential for diagnosis of breach, diagnosis of the cause of breach and the plan of management. Mechanism of labor will be discussed in the face-to-face -face session. From slide 15 to 19 will be discussed in the face-to-face -face session. Management of breach during pregnancy will be either external cephalic version and expectant management if successful versus elective lower segment cesarean section and this will depend on the criteria of the patient. This flow chart will be discussed in the face-to-face -face session. External cephalic version is a procedure used to turn the fetal presenting part from breach to cephalic presentation by manipulating the fetus through the abdominal wall. The goal is to increase the proportion of vertex presentations near term, thus increasing the chance for vaginal delivery. ECV is done at 36 weeks with a success rate 60%. The contraindications of ECV are the contraindications of vaginal delivery in breach presentations which are either fetal causes or maternal causes. They include engagement of the presenting part in the pelvis. Marked oligohydramnias. Placenta previa. Uterine anomalies. PIH, PF for accidental HGA. Multiple pregnancy. Prom. Previous uterine scar. Congenital fetal malformations. Contracted pelvis. Technique of ECV will be discussed in details in the face-to-face -face session. This slide will be discussed in detail in the face-to-face -face session. This slide will be discussed in detail in the face-to-face -face session. In external cephalic version, the procedure should be abandoned for fetal distress, patient discomfort, or if multiple attempts are unsuccessful. Following the procedure, external fetal heart rate monitoring should be continued for one hour. A dose of anti-D should be administered for RHVE patients. Complications include placental abruption. Uterine rupture. 
Amniotic fluid embolism. Prom. Preterm labor. Fetal distress and fetal demise. Of course the main issue in breach management during labor is to answer this important question vaginal delivery or cesarean section. Breach delivery is either by cesarean or vaginal delivery and furthermore vaginal delivery can either be spontaneous, partial extraction, or complete extraction. These are the prerequisites for the trial of vaginal breach delivery which are frank breach presentation. GA greater than or equal to 34 weeks. EFW 2000 to 3500 grams. Flexed fetal head. Adequate maternal pelvis. No maternal or fetal indications for CS. Previable fetus, GA 25W and weight 700G. Documented lethal CFMF. Patients with one of these criteria will be managed by elective lower segment cesarean section. These criteria are EFW greater than 3,500 grams or 1,500 grams. Contracted or borderline pelvis. Deflexed or hyperextended fetal head. Prolonged rupture of membranes. Unengaged presenting part. Dysfunctional labor. Elderly PG. History of infertility or poor obstetric history. Premature fetus, GA 25 to 34 W. Fetal distress. Foot link presentation. A historic score was created by Zatuchny in a trial to standardize the breach management. Spontaneous breach means that the fetus will be delivered without any intervention while in cases of assisted breach intervention will start at the level of the umbilicus while in breach extraction the intervention will start from the early beginning of the second stage. In spontaneous breach delivery the physician is just an observer. In cases of fetal distress for example the operator will intervene at the level of the umbilicus.